Hi, I'm Vin with Boris FX, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use BCC Chroma Key Studio and Media Composer 8 to fix and finish hastily shot green screen footage. I'm also going to be working with Fast Film Process, Grunge, and even Title Studio to finish my composite. While we will be working in Media Composer, the tips and tricks that you see here can easily be used in other hosts. Okay, so here I am in Media Composer, and I've imported my footage into the timeline. I shot this footage a while ago for the web series Staying in Boston. The scene involved the lead getting advice from a local Boston theater reviewer while en route to her rehearsal. We did originally try to shoot it while the vehicle was moving, but that posed significant continuity issues, so in the end we went back and reshot it in my driveway using a quick and dirty green screen. As you can see, this key was far from perfect. It's wrinkled, unevenly lit, and occasionally the wind blows it around. It's not ideal to say the least, but with BCC Chroma Key Studio, I can make quick work out of it. So as you can see, I've placed my video on the second video track because I'm going to want to reserve the V1 track for the background. Now the first thing that I want to do is head to my effect palette and in my key and blend category, I'm going to select BCC Chroma Key Studio. I'm going to drag that right onto my clip. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the issues with this shot is that the green backdrop is all wrinkled. Now, I can simply try to adjust my key to take this into account, but in the end, it's not going to look that great. What I need to do is clean this up and get it into usable shape. To do that, I'm going to go down and enable Pre-Key Cleanup. When I open this subgroup, I have a few options to adjust the hue, lightness, and saturation. By clicking on this color chip, I can set the color of my key. Once that's done, I can make any adjustments I want to those hue and saturation parameters to try and smooth this out. But you'll notice that regardless of what I do, it's not really helping with those wrinkles. There's simply too many color discrepancies to pull a solid key from color correction alone. To save this footage, what I want to do is come down here to my cleanup method and change it from color correction to push to solid. This will take my key color and simply fill in the area with a solid color. Now when I do this, I'm going to lose some of the details, for example, the rear window heaters. But I'm going to show you how we can fix that later on in this tutorial. When it comes to keying, a good rule of thumb is to only push the effect far enough to cover up the background. Too much and it can start to bleed into areas that I don't want. Now you'll notice here that my actress is wearing a dress with very similar colors to the background in it. While it shouldn't cause a problem here, if I need to make adjustments to my key, I still have access to my hue and saturation controls to help clean that up. Regardless, right out of the gate, this is looking a lot better. This is a very usable key, so let's start refining that mask. I'm going to go down to my chroma key subgroup and select my color chip. Using the eyedropper, I'll set the color of my key. By selecting view current matte, I can enable the matte view, and from here, by adjusting the density, balance, and lightness, I can refine this matte so that my keyed areas are solidly defined. Now even as I do this, I can see that there's a little spill here along the edges as light is reflected off the backdrop and onto the seat back. There's also some issues with my actress's dress, and you can see here that there are areas of a similar hue to the key itself. Now I could work with the spill suppression, but because the primary issue is that the matte itself needs to be refined, the first thing I want to do is enable matte cleanup. In the matte cleanup subgroup, I can tweak my black and white levels to finalize my matte. What I generally like to do once I've done that is to scrub through the video to make sure that the matte is solid throughout, and that there aren't any moments where some of the keying fails. Once I have the matte where I like it, I can turn off the view matte and drag my background plate right onto that V1 track. Alright, that's looking good, but there's still some roughness around the edges of my key, and I want to smooth that out. Fortunately, the blur parameter in the matte choker subgroup will be very handy here. A small increase to the blur amount is going to smooth out all of those jagged edges. And since I have a pretty solid key going on here, I'm going to leave the choke alone and just nudge the gray soften up a bit. This is going to soften the intermediate colors seen in motion blur, for example, when someone moves their hand across the key. Next, let's do some quick color correction. My plate is a night shot, so I want to darken up the interior of the car a bit. To do this, I'm going to enable color correction and just nudge down the brightness a little bit. Now, I can adjust the hue and contrast if I need to, but in this instance, I'm good with just adjusting the brightness. Lastly, I want to enable light wrap. Now this is going to take some of the lighter areas from the background and blend them in with the edge of my key. This is a very good way to reduce that harsh keyed look that you often see. To do this, I'm going to set my background to first below where I have my plate. Now I don't want to set my lightness too high or I'm going to get this unsightly white glow around the edges. So I'm going to try and set that somewhere around 0 0.1. 
softness and width parameters will allow me to control how faded the edge is, and this is something that we'll probably tweak back and forth as we work on our composite. But for now, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to go to my Film Style category in the Effect Palette and select Fast Film Process. Now I'm going to hold Alt and drag it directly onto the clip. This is going to add the effect to the same clip on top of Chroma Key Studio. Now to make sure these effects composite correctly, I want to select Chroma Key Studio, open up the Title Matte group, and enable Multi-Filter Start. Then, with Fast Film Process selected, I'm going to go to the Title Matte group again, and this time enable Multi-Filter End. Next, I'm going to select the preset Bleach Bypass. I really like how this highlights the area around your face where the light is coming in, but the blacks are a bit too crushed for my taste. So to fix this, I'm just going to go into the Pre-Process subgroup and just reduce that contrast a little bit. Feel free to tweak the various other settings to your liking. Alright, so at a basic level, things are actually looking pretty great. I can render this out and play it back, and I have a quick and solid key. This looks a lot better than what I started with, and it's important to note again that my original key was pretty slapdash. It was full of wrinkles, odd lighting, and even some backdrop movement. But I'm not done just yet, and there are a few more tricks I can use to get this ready for broadcast. With my background plate selected, I'm going to add three different effects in the following order. Fast Lens Blur, Fast Film Glow, and Tidal Studio. Don't forget to hold down Alt as you apply them so they stack. Alright, first let's look at Fast Lens Blur. I don't want to get it too high here, otherwise the background won't look real. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the iris scale to about 1. This isn't a huge blur, it's just something that creates a little bit of a distortion, a little bit of depth. Next, I'm going to go to my Fast Film Glow effect, and I'm going to select the preset Horizontal Cool Mist. This is going to create some nice texture on the glass and streaking from the lights as they pass by. Now I can always adjust the X-Radius parameter if that streak is too much. Finally, I'm going to do something very different with Title Studio. When we first think of Title Studio, we generally think of creating titles and other effects, but in this case we're going to use it for a very different purpose. I'm going to use Title Studio to recreate those rear window heat strips that I lost while working on the key. To do this, I'm going to launch the Title Studio UI and begin by deleting the placeholder text. Don't forget to toggle the Animated Static Control button seen here, otherwise you can create some unwanted keyframes. The first thing I want to do is create a new spline primitive. By selecting the Material track, I have access to the shape controls. With these selected, I'm going to change the object to a grid. Now I don't need any columns, so I'll set that to zero, and I'll increase the number of rows. Now grid lines aren't determined by fill properties, rather they are determined by border properties, so I want to slightly increase their width but I also want to decrease their opacity. This will allow them to be seen, but keep them slightly out of focus. The next thing I want to do is, with my grid track selected, go up to Shaders, Deformers, Curl. What I want to do here is tweak the curl amount and the axis offset parameters in such a way that the lines curve downward about midway across the image. I don't need to see them on the right side of the background, since that area is what appears in the window next to my actress. They don't have to be exact, but feel free to keep playing with them until you get something that looks natural. When satisfied, hit Apply. Okay, with that done, I'm going to create a new video track and drop BCC Vignette onto it. Vignette is located in the Style palette under Film Styles. Now, I don't need to do a lot here, but the default works very nicely. However, feel free to adjust the radius, softness, and color to match the project you're currently working on. Now at this point, if I render out my clip and scrub through, there are two things I notice. The first is that my background shakes a little bit at around the midpoint. The other thing I notice is that even though they're driving past streetlights, there's no lighting that changes inside the car. To fix this, I want to create two new video tracks. I'm going to apply BCC Grunge to both of them, but let's start with the V3 track first. In the Stylize category, I'm going to select Grunge and drop that right onto the track. The very first thing I want to do is disable this texture. I don't need it. Next, I want to scan my timeline for the moment where the shake occurs. Then, I can trim my effect so that it only occurs when the shake does. This will save me from having to do any keyframing. Next, I'm going to enable shake, and in the parameter subgroup, I'm going to set my X position to zero. The reason for that is, if I look at my background movement, it bounces up and down, not left to right. With that in mind, I want to set the Y position to something small. I don't want to set it too high or it'll look like they're driving into a ditch. But what I want to do is I want to play around with the speed and randomness parameters. Now this is a bit of trial and error and will depend largely on your background clip. 
I want to finesse these until the car shakes, roughly in time with the background. Oh, one thing to point out, incidentally, in order to see this shake, I want to make sure that I have enabled source shake, which is right here. Okay, lastly, let's do something to try and replicate the movement of those lights. As I mentioned before, I'm going to select a new instance of grunge and drop that onto my topmost track. Again, I'm going to disable the texture, and this time I'm going to enable flicker. Once again, this is a bit of trial and error here, but playing around with the amount, speed, and randomness parameters will allow me to create a subtle shift in the lighting. When I'm satisfied, I can render that out, and I go from this to this. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more quick tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.